Bulgarian folk tales. The princess, three pigs, and three birthmarks. Once upon a time, there lived a poor man who had a wife. After a time, they had saved enough money to buy a piglet. They enjoyed rearing their piglet very much, but their happiness was not complete. They still did not have a child of their own. One day, the wife told her husband, I think I might be pregnant. Maybe you are mistaken. After a few days, the husband said to his wife, I think the pig might be pregnant. Maybe you are mistaken. It must have eaten too much and its belly is fat. The months passed and their son was born. The man was happy. He went to the pigsty to feed the pig. And what did he see there? Three little piglets had also been born that day. Everyone in the house was happy. As the young boy grew up, he took the pigs to graze in the meadow at the end of the king's garden. The boy had a flute and he liked to play it for the pigs to dance. One day, the young princess saw the pigs dancing in the meadow below. For how much will you sell me a dancing pig? For no money at all if you lift your skirt to your knee. What use is that to you? Would you rather not have a bag of gold? But the boy said he did not want the gold. <laughs> then the princess suddenly changed her mind and lifted up her skirt to her knee. And the boy gave her a pig. When he arrived home in the evening, his father asked the boy, Where is the missing pig? The wolf has taken it. He will pay the price. The boy returned to the king's garden with his pigs the very next day, where the princess saw him and asked again, For how much money will you sell me a second dancing pig? For the first one we will not dance alone. For no money at all if you lift your skirt up to your waist. Would you rather not have a bag of gold? But the boy said he did not want the gold. The princess hesitated for a second and then pulled her skirt up to her waist. And the boy gave her the second pig. When the boy arrived home that night, his father asked, Where is the second missing pig? The wolf has taken him. It will pay the price. On the third day, the boy went back to the same place with his last pig. Where he found the princess waiting for him. For how much will you sell me the third dancing pig? Because the first two will not dance without the third. For no money at all if you lift your skirt up to your neck. Then the boy gave her the third pig along with his flute. When the boy arrived home that night, his father asked, Where is the third missing pig? The wolf took it farther. It said it would pay the price. The wolf has no money. It has father. It has a lot. And now I shall go and collect the price for the pigs. When the boy arrived at the palace gates, a guard asked him, what do you want here, little boy? I came to the princess to get the price for my pigs. The guard went to the princess and told her that a boy had come to be paid for the three pigs. The princess simply said, Fill a bag with gold and give it to him. The boy arrived home again and poured all the gold out onto a table. The boy's mother and father had never seen so much money in their lives before. The next day, the king announced that his daughter had three birthmarks on her body and any man who could tell him where they were could marry her. But any man who made a mistake would be beaten for his troubles. Hearing this, the boy said, Father, go to the market and buy me the strongest horse, the finest saddle, a beautiful suit and a silver sword, but do not bargain and pay the proper price. 
and off the boy set for the royal palace. As he was riding, he met a prince and a young baron, who asked the boy, Where are you going, young knight? I'm riding where I like. What is your name? It is what it is. Look, let's ride with him, he knows a lot of jokes. And from then on, they called him the Joker. As they were riding, the sun set and they found themselves on the shore of a large lake. After the boy fell asleep, the prince and the baron drove a stick into the centre of the lake and fastened the boy's horse to it. When the boy woke, he saw what they had done to his horse, but he did not say a word. But he cut the hide on the legs of the other horses and rolled it up to the knee. Then he fell asleep again. When morning came, they shouted, Get up, Joker! You are a lazy fellow. Look, your horse swam to the middle of the lake to quench its thirst. That's right! And yours rolled their trousers up to go and save it. <laughs> three reached the palace the next day. There were many princes, barons and gypsies gathered, but none of them knew where the princess had her birthmarks, and each received 60 strokes of the cane for his troubles. The baron thought it best to go in with the boy, as he might find out the answers. The boy said, Venus is shining on her delicate belly. That's right, said the king. Why did you say that? That was exactly what I wanted to say. The sun and the moon radiate their beams from her bosoms. That's right, came the reply. That was exactly what I wanted to say, said the young baron. The courtiers began to discuss the result. Their decision was that the princess and the three young men should go to the same bed and the one she turns to will be her husband. And that's what they did. The boy had a good stock of sweets and cakes in his pockets and he ate them noisily. What are you eating? the Baron asked. The heel of my boot. Take off your boot and eat its heel. So the Baron tore the heel off his boot and offered a part to the Princess. Please have some, my dear. The Princess could not chew the leathery heel and she kicked the Baron out of the bed. Then she turned towards the boy, who gave her sweets and cakes. The next morning the door was opened and they saw that only the boy was in the bed, while the Baron hid in shame. The Baron got 60 strokes for feeding the Princess with the heel of his boot and another 60 strokes because he did not know the whereabouts of her birthmarks. And so the boy married the Princess and they had a fabulous feast and all were invited, both rich and poor. King Matthias liked to roam the country. Once he walked into a tiny village to see how the local people lived. There was an inscription on the gate of the mayor's house that read, Here lives the village mayor. Here he lives with no trouble or care. King Matthias made a note of these words and scribbled the mayor's address down in a little book. 
live your life so carefree, Mr. Mayor, then it's my job to give you something to worry about, he thought. Then the king returned home. Back in those days, jugs were made out of clay and one of the king's jugs had a hole in it. So King Matthias sent the jug down to the mayor saying that he should mend the jug or else have his head chopped off. The village mayor received both the jug and the message. He was very sad because he really did not know what to do. The mayor had a pretty daughter who asked her father, Dear father, I've never seen you worry like this before. What on earth wrong? Why are you so very sad? Why should I bother telling you? You could never help. But perhaps I can help after all. His Majesty the King has sent me a jug with a hole in it, with an order to mend it. But if I cannot fulfill his command, He'll have my head chopped clean off. Oh, Father, please don't be so sad. Send the jug back to the king with a message that he should turn the jug inside out as material is always mended on the other side. Very well. And he sent the jug back with the message. This was a brilliant idea because the jug could never be turned inside out. After this, the king sent a millstone and ordered the mayor to skin it. This made the mayor even sadder, because it's impossible to skin a millstone. His daughter asked the mayor, Why are you so sad again, father dear? My sweetest daughter, you definitely won't be able to help me this time, but perhaps I can help you after all. His majesty has sent me a millstone and ordered me to skin it. If I do not obey him, I shall have my head lopped off. But it's really not a problem at all. Write a letter to the king asking him to have the millstone slaughtered because no beast can be skinned before it's had its throat cut. And so the king should do the same to the millstone first. So the mayor sent the millstone back to the king with that message. The idea proved to be brilliant, and so this time the king ordered him to visit him at the palace. The village mayor went up to the palace where he thought he would be rewarded. But instead, the king wanted to know who had given him these inventive ideas and so the mayor was forced to confess. I have a pretty daughter at home who helped me solve those two riddles. Very well, mayor, I want you to go home and tell your daughter to come to my palace. She should wear no dress, but should not be naked, and she should not walk, should not ride, and should not come in a carriage. She also should, but should not bring me a gift. Chopped off. So the mayor went home in very low spirits. He was convinced that his young daughter would never be able to solve such a complex riddle. The mayor told his daughter what the king had said and then he added, This is the end for you, my darling girl. Why so, father dear? 
The king said, you have to go to the palace. You should not wear a dress. You should not be naked. You should not walk. You should not ride. You should not go by coach. You should take him a gift. And at the same time, you should not take him a gift. Very good, father. I shall go. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. So the girl took off her dress, but kept on her bra. Thus, she was not wearing a dress, but at the same time, she was not naked. Then she took a billy goat and put one of her feet on the back of the goat and walked on one foot on the edge of the road. She then took a white dove and carried it in her hand. And this is how she went to the palace to see the king. When the king saw the girl, he was very surprised. <coughs> then the girl spoke to the king and said, Your Majesty, I present myself upon your order. This is your gift, she said, and let the dove fly away. Thus she took and she did not take a gift. Then the king said, Everything is fine, my girl, but tell me, why did you not hide your private parts instead of your bosoms? And the girl replied, Your Royal Highness, my private parts were created by God, but I grew my bosoms myself. I am ashamed of them and that's why I hid them. The king gave the girl a handsome reward and that is the end of my story. Once upon a time there was an old king and he had three sons. The king was so old that he could not leave his castle and so he had a church built in the grounds where he could pray. On the day that the church was at last complete, a bird began to sing on top of its tower. When the king heard the bird's song, he suddenly became a young man once more and he ordered his sons to catch the bird. The eldest son climbed to the top of the tower, but as soon as he reached out to catch the bird, it flew away. The prince watched the bird as it flew, and he saw it land in a nearby forest. Father, I saw where the bird flew. I shall pursue it. Godspeed, my son, and return with the bird as soon as you can. The young prince arrived at the forest as the sun began to set. He made a fire and ate his supper. Then he saw a fox. Go, dog, and catch that fox. The fox stood and commanded, May you and your dog turn to stone. So that is what happened. The next morning, the middle son climbed to the tower to catch the bird. He saw the same thing that his brother had seen, and as he came down from the tower, he said, I too shall follow the bird. He reached the forest by sunset and also sat and ate his supper, and as he ate, he saw the fox. Go, dog, and catch that fox. The fox stood and commanded, May you and your dog turn to stone. On the third morning, the bird sang again. And so the youngest prince climbed the tower, but the bird flew away once more. 
the youngest son saw the same forest that his brothers had seen. He also followed the bird's flight and arrived at the forest as the sun was setting. He also made a fire and sat and ate his supper. Then he saw the fox. Fine fox, do not bark. Come and share my food instead. I would join you with pleasure, but I am afraid of your dog. Don't be afraid, I shall tie it to a tree. Prince, do you think the bird is in this tree? That's what I think. I saw it fly right here. But that is not so. The bird is very far away and don't be sad because we shall catch it. The bird is in the land of the Red King and that is seven lands away. There is a pear tree in the garden of the king and in that tree there is a hollow and in that hollow lives the bird. Then the fox turned into a fine young man and the two of them set forth. After many days and nights they arrived at the city where the Red King lived. And as they approached the royal garden the fox said, This is the pear tree prince. It won't be hard to catch the bird, but there is one difficulty. As you climb down the tree, try not to bite a pear because the tree will make such a noise that it will wake all the guards in the royal palace. As the prince climbed back down the tree, he took a breath and opened his mouth so wide that a pear popped between his teeth and he bit on it by chance. The guards ran to the garden and caught the young prince. The Red King said, I see you are a prince. I should have you executed, but I will spare your life on one condition. What would that be? There is a beautiful palace on the shores of the Red Sea. In that palace lives a beautiful princess. If you bring her here, I will pardon you. I have one life, I have one death, I shall do my best. Again you took a difficult task. I won't let you do it alone. I shall take the task myself because you were good to me, unlike your brothers. The prince and the fox journeyed on and soon reached the shores of the Red Sea. The fox tore off a gigantic leaf and shaped it into a boat with oars. Then they sat in the boat and crossed the sea. And as they reached the far side of the sea, the fox kicked the boat and it turned into a pair of golden shoes and the fox turned into an old cobbler with a long white beard. The fox then walked to and fro in front of the beautiful palace with the golden shoes in his hands. The princess shouted down to him, Poor cobbler, bring those golden shoes to me and I shall buy them. I'm sorry, your highness, but I am very old and cannot climb stairs. Would you be so kind and come down to try them on? So the princess ran down to try on the shoes. They fit her beautiful feet perfectly. Then the old man shouted, Little shoes, take all three of us to where we want to be. And they found themselves back on the far side of the sea in a flash. Then he asked the princess, Tell me, do you know the Red King as we came here to take you there? Of course I know him. I shall never marry him. I would rather die. What would you say to the prince, your majesty? I should like to marry him even though he had me kidnapped. Worry not, princess. You shall marry him and I shall marry the Red King. When they arrived back in the Red King's city, the fox did a somersault and changed into a pretty princess much like the other. Red King saw the princess, he was delighted. He gathered all his ministers and friends and began to prepare for a wedding feast. And as they were sitting around the table, one of the wedding guests said, This princess is perfect except for one fault. The other asked, And what is that? The gentleman replied, Why? She has the eyes of a fox. What girl would not be ashamed when someone says she has the eyes of a fox? The bride hid under the table, did a somersault and turned back into the fox and ran out of the room in the greatest of haste. By the time the guests came to their senses, the fox was far, far away.
three of them continued their journey home, and as they passed the forest, they saw the place where the prince had given supper to the fox. Here the fox jumped down and said, Do you see these figures of stone? They are your brothers, and these are their horses. How did they come to be here? They set their dogs on me, and so I turned them to stone. Would you like me to turn them back again? Of course I would. Every man loves his brothers. Very well, I will turn them back, but you may be sorry I did. The fox then walked over and patted the stone statues. Rise up and live once more. Both of them stood up and the fox said, Well, dear prince, I shall travel no further with you. They bid farewell to each other and the fox left. The four of them travelled home together, but they soon began to quarrel. Was it fair the youngest son should marry first? So the two princes decided to kill their youngest brother. The eldest prince cut off his head with his sword. The fox knew this would happen and it ran to find the head a distance from the body. It ran hither and thither and saw a snake with leaves in its mouth. Hey snake, give those leaves to me. I will not. It took me seven long years to find them. The fox stamped on the snake's tail and it dropped the leaves on the ground. The fox picked the leaves up and ran to the prince. It rubbed the leaves on the prince's neck and put his head back in its proper place. The prince opened his eyes. Oh, what a deep sleep I had. You fell asleep for eternity, but I saved your life. I told you your brothers would kill you and rob you of your wife. Take better care in the future. Godspeed! And then the fox vanished. The boy arrived home to his father with a little bird in his shirt. He placed the bird on top of the clock. The bird began to sing a beautiful tune and the old king sprang to his feet like a young man once more. Who brought this bird to me? It was me, father, said the youngest one. What should I do with your troublesome brothers? Your majesty, dear father, give them money and horses and let them go on their way. I never want to see them here again. And the two princes were banished from the land. The youngest prince married his beautiful bride and they both lived happily ever after.